YOLO composing gloves here, and I have a question for you. Would you like some X? No, n n not the drug, the plug-in. But like the drug, it can elicit violent reactions of joy and energy. X is known to widen audio and cause psychoacoustic experiences to happen to its users. Let's hear a couple of demos of this madness at work. All right, so first up, I have this piano take that I've got. I'm gonna disable it so you can hear it dry. And this is what I recorded. Okay, cool, so you get the idea. Let's go ahead and slap some dang X on that jazz. And we're just gonna go through a couple of the presets. Okay, so I have this sort of funny little track thing that I was working on a while ago, and I wanna slap X on this here funky bass line. So let's really quick get a dry listen. Okay, cool, so you get the idea. Let's just go through a couple more presets. Let's, this time, let's dig around in the bass area. That's pretty cool. All right, got another example for you here real quick. This one is vocal and it's it's me singing, so you know. Go easy, I'm not a singer. Let's go ahead and uh, listen to it. I just wanted to show you it on a vocal and I've got it coming through in parallel. So there's a dry mix and then a vocal mix and this one has an X on the end of it. And it's uh, this one is the Athena presets. It's one of the first ones you'll find. And let me go ahead and play it. When we are together, I feel my name. Are together, no place is the same. When we are together, the sidewalks are full. When we are together, I feel your soul. Now I'm going to remove X and you'll hear a difference. <laughs> when we are together, I feel my name. When we are together, no place is the same When we are together The sidewalks are full Now I will put it back on When we are together I feel my name When we are together No place is the same Now I'm going to just go through a couple presets while it's playing so you get some more variety here When we are together I feel my name When we are together No place is the same When we are together The sidewalks are full When we are together I feel your soul They've got some crazy ones in here When we are together I feel my name When we are together
together, no place is the same. When we are together, the sidewalks are full. When we are together, I feel your soul. So, you get the idea. There's some demos. X is a psychoacoustic stereo shaping plugin. It excels in creating unique spaces. This video is sponsored by the man himself, Skylar Allen Crank, the creator of X. I also have a code in the description where you can get X at a discount, as well as I'll be giving away two copies to just random commenters. So be sure to drop what you would use this plugin for in the comments down below. For EALS, use code Composing Gloves. The plugin loads extremely fast. This is one of those plugins where many more features exist than it first looks like. For example, the light below the center button. That's a separate control and it does different things depending on what page you're on. The in and out words also have specific page uses. Some of them including dynamically controlling parameters based on the signal or linking channels together. The little light on two of the pages also relates to the dynamics. The menus under what at first appears to be only presets actually contains many additional options that can also change per page, giving extensive control over what is probably the most complete stereo imager to date. So there are three menus. The first is the engine, and you see a massive crank presented to you. This controls the X size of your content and is linked to the small light at the bottom of the page. A size of 100% is stereo and a size of zero is mono, and should you venture into the X category, anything over 100%, you will end up in the land of extra wide and extra thick. at the bottom of this page determines the stereo shaping direction that you're going. Here is a quick color code list from the manual itself. One special feature of this plug is the ability to link the stereo shape to change with the dynamics of your signal. You can do this with the threshold control on the left side and fine tune it with the attack and release controls at the bottom. Seeking things in bright gold wings, airborne dust floating in the air. Bottle luck came to us, but we were breathing up our cares. Hand reached out and we woke up, airborne dust started falling down. Hand clasped with promises, dust floating down. Abstract shapes form surround and takes the space. Dreams from dust to golden bus bring you from the head to here. For the center button in the middle is more than just mono. It takes the mono data of the track and mixes it with the dynamic signal from X. This can be helpful for ensuring mono compatibility while still gaining a dynamic image. There are a few secret controls, such as clicking the in text to reveal that side chaining is actually supported. This can lead to crazy possibilities such as linking the kick drum to control the dynamic imaging of a synth and so on. This part's a little bit involved so I'm going to explain it real quick. So here we have got a bass line with a drum pattern. And I just want the synthesizer to change stereo its stereo image when the kick hits. That way it maybe gets out of the way of the kick and it sounds a little bit cleaner. So to do that, I'm gonna take the kick and side chain it to the Harmer channel because that's the synth I'm using. And you just shift click to do that. 
on Harmer, I'm gonna add X since I want to change its stereo image. And we're going to tell it to look at that as our input. So I'm gonna come over here to the cog, another cog, so two cogs, go to processing, and we have an input left, right? This will change the input of what's coming in. So you're probably not gonna want this. What you want is you want sidechain. So we go to our sidechain left, right? These are our sidechain inputs. And we're going to select our kick. It'll appear there since we sent it there. Go back to our plug. Now on our plug, it's all set up. All we have to do now is tell it, use the sidechain input to control the stereo imaging. And that is controlled by clicking the in button. So there it is. And now if I play it, we need, now it doesn't reach our threshold as we can see because it's red line. So we need to bring that down. And we are good there. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to bring our size way up. I'm gonna go to green. And then I'm gonna go over to hyper and turn that on and we'll be able to hear it pretty clearly. I'm gonna slow it down even more. And link the channels. And one thing that we could do is we could come in here, link hyperspeed to a half note rhythm, and we'll go to engine, and we're going, that just ensures that it's in tempo with our songs. So that's kind of a nifty feature. And then on engine, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change to go the other way, stereo to X size. And now you might be wondering, what does it sound like with it off, with it off? It's just a constant image. And so that's just some nifty ways. Of course, there's a, a bazillion ways you could set this up to interact with how things are going on here. Uh, but that's just one of them. And that's how you set up the side chain. If you click the out button, this will lock the compressor settings in place while you try out presets, which can be very handy since the compressor settings depend on the material we feed it and having them change all over can cause problems. If you click the middle of the X crank, you will get a vector scope with a wet dry slider for dialing in the effect in parallel. For those who don't know how vector scopes work, a signal that lies within the 45 degree lines, which aren't marked yet, they're going to be marked at some point, but I'll open another vector scope that has them. Signals that fall in the top or bottom halves of these lines are constructively interfering and will be mono compatible. Signals that are out of phase will be on the left and right sides and will deconstructively interfere when summed to mono, which is a handy way to tell if your stuff will translate over phones and other mono devices. Up next we have hyperspace. To turn this selection on, click the big Hyper drive. button at the bottom. The light under it this time controls if the section should respond to the dynamics of the signal or not. In this area, we are in control of two Haas delays. For those of you who don't know what a Haas delay is, it's simply a delay from one speaker to the other. This causes your brain to take this difference information and localize the sound, meaning it determines where the sound is in space. This is a feature some delays sport, but here we are given not one, but two Haas delays. Then to top it off, we will get a massive crank that can fade between the delays. And it gets even better. Each Haas delay has its own Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is when something moves past you fast. For example, take an approaching car. As it gets closer, the pitch appears to go up. And as it moves away, the pitch appears to go down. This is also why trains sound the way they do. You can link the two Haas delays together or unlink them by simply clicking the word Haas. The slider on the left, called space, controls the delay of the Haas, which in turn affects its position in space. Jump controls how the panning works. A minimum jump gives mono, while a maximum jump gives a wide pan. Since we have a delay, there is naturally faders for feedback in a wet dry fader. In order for the infinite loop to work, you must have the jump on minimum. Then, the space will control the frequency of the feedback.
It's also worth looking in the area where presets were as there are now sync options for the LFO as well as independent LFO shapes for the Doppler and the Haas effects. Finally, we have the warp drive. This monster is a reverb-like unit. It also has the ability to link channels by clicking the left or right text. The light in this case gives the ability to change to dynamic mode, just like the hyperspace did. Here we are presented with two sliders to control the bandpass of a reverb, as well as a pre-delay that allows for simulating larger rooms where echoes have a significant delay before coming back to be heard. The bandpass has the ability to be tuned in the preset panel in order to get verb at a very specific note. And in here, you'll also find loads of control and sync options for parameters on the warp drive panel. We can set the size of this warp field with the big crank in the middle. This is basically a reverb decay knob, and it gives you control over whether or not your reverb is long or short. We again are presented with a mix slider, and this time on the right, we get a damper slider, which controls how long the high frequencies ring in our reverb. The teleportal slider gives you the ability to add the verb to the signal after it's processed dynamically. In this way, you can teleport the reverb behind the sound, allowing you to keep the much more forward transience of your sound there, producing cleaner textures and better spatial positioning. And that's it. As a plugin, it's actually one that I am grabbing a lot more than I initially thought I would, especially as I've seen it go through the beta stages. Okay, so if I had to rank it, I would give it a 9 out of 10. And I have a couple reasons for this. The first one is, it's among the most powerful and versatile imaging plugins you can get. A lot of other imaging plugins either have one knob or they have a couple knobs but they focus on one technique. And as a result, you can get some cool images out of them but they're just limited in that they don't talk to each other very nicely. So then you have to load up a bunch of other things in order to get a really cool, useful image with a lot of automation and whatnot. Whereas here, I can toss this on and all that stuff's already there and it even responds dynamically. So I can toss in my automation plus all these things. So I love it for that reason. There's also the CPU efficiency. This thing just has loaded so fast. It wasn't always like this either. The earlier betas, this is something that's really improved. So I really appreciate that, which is one thing I also want to say. The developer, Skyler, has taken this feedback very seriously. And I've actually seen it just go through just tons of improvements. And so I'm excited to see how it continues to grow and develop. Not to mention that this is like a huge step forward for Skyler in his life. And so I also really support it for that reason. I really like the fact that this is affecting someone's life. That's really cool to see someone reach their dream and do something that helps so many other people. So those are many of the pros. There are a couple things I think that could be taken into account to bring it up another level, but they are nearly all cosmetic. So the first one is resizability. It would be really great if this thing was resizable. It's not a big deal because you can always scroll through windows, but that would definitely bump it up probably to a 10. That's all I really think that it's missing. The next one would be an alternate sleek minimalistic design. So I'm okay with the design as it is. I actually think it looks great, but I would also appreciate just a really modern sleek minimalistic design that would probably favor the resizability a bit better. Again, that's a small thing. Tool tips are also a welcome addition. They don't currently exist. They'll probably exist at some point down the line. Finally, there is always more room for additional power such as envelopes, additional delays, and so on. But again, I think the balance struck between not too simple and not too complicated is great. Like for example, on the hyperspace panel, the notion of using two Haas delays and two Dopplers in the configuration with that LFO is genius. It's so cool. I could think of so many other combinations that could potentially be added that could really add some variety. But again, that's at the risk of getting more complicated. So I really like how things are nested away. Like the side chaining is in there and it's nested away. So if you want it, it's there, but it's not going to obscure your experience. And most of the time it's a setting you probably won't touch unless you deliberately want to use that thing. So it's really cool. I like how things have been laid out in more complicated settings are in places where they make sense. 
So that's definitely something to consider. If you have any questions, let me know. Be sure to leave a comment down below on what you would use this for. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, and have a blessed day.